Every great event creates its own legends. There are many stories told of the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb, the most amazing and valuable archaeological treasure ever found. This is one of those stories. to show for six years' work, eh, Down? What will you do, Qatar Effendi? I don't know. Teach in some school somewhere, I suppose. What's this? Where's this from? Over there. Show me. Is there something special? It's the sign of the Royal Necropolis. Can you, can you make it out? Death will come swiftly to those who disturb the eternal sleep of the king. A curse! I don't believe in curses, Dowd. But I believe in the medallion. It means we're close. It means we're nearly there. I'm going to telegraph Lord Carnarvon. Tell him I'm on my way. Immediately. Close the site down and keep it guarded. Masawama, Carta. A dark tomb. I can breathe the air within it. In October 1922, a seance was held at Highclere Castle before a distinguished gathering. Present were George, Earl of Carnarvon, and Lord of Highclere Castle. 
his wife, Lady Almina, and their daughter, Evelyn. Spirit, reach out to us. Come to us. If you are here, give us a sign. Why on earth did you invite her? She doesn't invite the princess. She simply descends. <clears throat> Reach out to us, come to us. If you are here, give us a sign. Oh. Why do you disturb me? My life is now so peaceful and so beautiful. I am become one with Osiris and with Ra, the great god of the sun. Death is not an end, but a welcome beginning. But perhaps this house will soon know. Perhaps? Let not the master of this house return again to my land. Of course, it's only been, what, uh, six years? Eleven? I was away at school last time you were here. Ah. Mother and I were delighted when your telegram came. Huh. Question is, how your father took it? Carter, welcome back. Look, well, Carnarvon. Now, if I may drag you away from my daughter. <laughs> only with difficulty, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carter, but six years is too long. Look at this, will you? It's the seal of the necropolis. Oh, we found similar things in the valley before. But never alongside this. Tomb robbers? Probably. Caught in the act, dropped in on the way out. Where exactly did you find this? Very near the tomb of Ramesses the Sixth. Exactly where it ought to be, in the Valley of the Kings. It changes nothing. It changes everything. Now we know where to concentrate our efforts. You're obsessed, aren't you? We're finding Tutankhamun's tomb. I admit it. After all the years I've spent working at Luxor and in the Valley of the Kings, I know it's there somewhere, and now I've almost pinpointed it. Even so. Every king for generations, from Tutmorphis I to Amenorphis, was entombed in that area close to ancient Thebes. And we know that Tutankhamun restored Thebes as the royal capital. I've subsidized that pet theory of yours for six years. Six years of expectation, six years of disappointment. And all that sand you've dug up. 200,000 tons, they tell me. 20,000 pounds of mine.
was that? Is that in the library? Call the police. Yes, my lord. Burglar, George? It certainly looks like it, my dear. Oh. The only thing missing seems to be the Davis papyrus. The one I gave you last week? Yes. Christmas. Valuable? An unidentified piece of papyrus? An inventory of some kind? Theodore Davis found it in Luxor some years ago. 18th Dynasty, or so the dealer said. There are many things in this room worth far more than that. Hey, Mr. Fang. Hey, Mr. Fang Carter. Still work or is it all finished? It was all finished. We start again tomorrow. <laughs> I did not steal it. Somebody gave it to you then, uh, some kind person. I dug it up. You stole it from tourist lady. From the ground in the valley. Let me see. Boy, you stole it. Now let me see. Let me see. You dug this up, you say? I did, I swear. Wait a minute. It's cheap copy of you piastres. That's no copy. Stop! 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 Stop, will you? Come back, we're not gonna hurt you! That figure's worth money! Come back, come back! Calm down, I'm not gonna hurt you. Calm down. Promise. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. You hold on to this. It may pay for your education someday. What's your name? Why do you want to know? What's your name? Mohammed Abdul Hassan Ali Gaman. Too long. We'll call you Fishbait. No parents? My father, he's the owner of a bank, and my mother, a beautiful lady from London. And they lost you when you were a baby, and you've been unhappy ever since. How do you know? Same story. I've been telling it for years. <laughs> he's a born archaeologist. I think we could use him. You want me to work for you? Not as number one man. Maybe we need a water boy. When do I start? Now. Come on. I want you to show me where you found it. Have you considered my proposition? You'll notice one or two additions. The Van Dyke up there, the Guido Reni. I have the papyrus. 
You have a torn half of a papyrus. Lord Carnarvon has the other half. I was able to retrieve it. As soon as I had the second piece in my possession, I knew my instinct was right. See, can you understand the signs, the meaning? It is an inventory of precious objects, hundreds and hundreds of them. Can you imagine the fantastic treasure that awaits anyone who opens up Tutankhamun's tomb? And it can be obtained so easily. By mounting an exhausting expedition in the heat of the desert? No, thank you. But the work is already being done by Howard Carter. He has been searching the valley systematically for six years. And now there is a strong rumor in Luxor that Carter is on the verge of a big discovery. It must be the tomb of Tutankhamun. Do you seriously wish to pass this information on to me? I need your help. I cannot procure the treasure on my own. But you, with your knowledge of how to influence authority, you forget how much I learned of your dealings when I was living here. All confidential. And it will remain confidential. I have never felt vindictive towards you. Thank you. However, if I felt you were treating this opportunity to, how do you say, kiss and make up with contempt, if I thought you had finished with me, <laughs> Dear Giovanna, think of it, Jonas. A treasure utterly unique, more valuable than anything you have yet possessed. This treasure is for you. I wish you had not threatened me. Signora. Yes, Excellency. And pack carefully. We leave tonight. What clothes, Excellency? When in Egypt. I can't be here. It's too close to the other tomb. We'll cover the area anyway, inch by inch. Let's hope we find something before the tourist season. This is where Fish Bay found that little statue. Where's the tomb? Perhaps if we can't find it, it's because no one has ever found it before. I doubt it. Too many vandals over too many centuries. It's possible. We find the tomb sealed? My friend, anything is possible.
mail come in this week? Thanks. Mr. Carter. Ah, Miss... Uh... Morrissey. Sarah Morrissey. The lady is Scribbler. And I have plenty of questions. Well, I've no time now. Well, then I'll ask you only one. What about the curse? Look, if you want to go around picking up odds and ends of gossip, do so. But don't expect any help from me. I've got work to do. Lady killer. There's certainly steps. There's something. For the next few weeks, work continued furiously 24 hours a day. There were obstacles of all kinds, but the accumulated rubble of 3,000 years was slowly and patiently uncovered. His seal. Too uncommon. We found it. Too uncommon's tomb. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> spread around the world that an ancient royal tomb was to be uncovered, sensation-seeking journalists, selfish collectors, thieves and vultures gathered in great numbers in the Valley of the Kings. The seductive promise of treasure hid the more subtle certainty of coming tragedy. Parties, congratulations and hope you can join us here soon. Carter, ah. Just send him a telegram saying, bravo. What do you mean? I'm not go. George, you've led a very full and adventurous life. Isn't it about time you settled for a little comfort in your own home? Are you away all the time? We made our arrangements a long time ago. All the same, I am concerned for your welfare. 
Thank you. Evelyn. We just had a telegram from Carter. I know. Isn't it wonderful? I knew he'd find it. You're going, of course. Of course. What the Carnarvons start, they usually finish. <laughs> I shall not be going with you. Oh, then I shall. I have no plans. I can look after him. Are you sure it's your father you want to look after? Oh, may I go? Oh, I suppose so. Not on my account. <laughs> I'll start a packing list. Excuse me. George? Mm -hmm. About that warning of the princesses. Oh, that seance. Well, I know you don't believe in that sort of no, thing. No, I don't. But but the voice, the the doors. Well, just tricks. How she arranged it all, I don't know. Devilish clever, am I? Anyway, whatever happens. I'm going to eat you. If that's your decision. Oh! Yeah. A thorn? Oh, God. It's one of our prize winners. It's not supposed to have any thorns. Are you dying alone, sir? Not quite. Jonash Sebastian. What are you doing back in Egypt? I have no treasures to sell. I do confess to some concern over the eventual fate of whatever it is you're about to find. Such great artifacts. The pride of Egypt's heritage should not, shall we say, end up possessed by the wrong people. You're not interested in Egypt's heritage. You simply want to possess anything unique. Only if it's a thing of beauty. The moment an agreement is concluded between us, there will be placed at your disposal more money than you could hope to spend in your lifetime. You're wasting your breath. I'd say you underrate me, Mr. Carter. Wouldn't you find it regrettable if some unpleasant incident necessitated your being asked to leave Egypt with your work unfinished? That's unlikely. Only too likely, Mr. Carter. If, however, you and I were to have an agreement. I'll tell you plainly, Sebastian. Neither you nor anyone like you is going to get his hands on anything we find. Lord Carnarvon, Lady Evelyn. Congratulations, Carter. I can't tell you how proud I am for you. Thank you, sir. I knew you'd want us to wait till you got here before we opened the tomb. Delighted you should want me to share in, uh, what was your expression, the ecstasy of discovery. <laughs> of course, I can't tell exactly what we'll find. No, 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 indeed. That woman, what the devil's she doing here? I'm spending the winter in Egypt for my health, my lord. It would have been better for yours if you had stayed in England. Tommy went upstairs, my dear. Come and see us soon. Yes, of course. Your Lordship, about the curse. Absolute poppycock. I'm sure Mr. Carter will answer all your questions. Come on, my dear. Only serious questions, none of that ridiculous curse stuff. What do you expect to find when you open the tomb? Perhaps nothing at all. It's quite possible it was emptied by tomb robbers centuries ago. Oh, sir. Ah, Miss Morrissey. Assuming that the tomb hasn't been plundered and contains objects of great value, what exactly do you get out of it? How do you mean? I mean, Lord Carnarvon will receive most of the credit, the museums will get most of the artifacts, and you'll come out with a few thousand dollars. A pound. Is that enough after six years of your life? Yes. Why? I'll tell you. When I was very young, I came here dreaming of buried treasure. I worked with the best, Flinders Petrie, Theodore Davis, Newby. I began to see the work as something else. Not just digging in sand for priceless artifacts, but the gradual piecing together of 4,000 years of human experience, civilization, long before the Greeks, the Romans, or Christ. Knowledge. That's what I shall get out of it. Does that satisfy you? Only for the moment. 
Mr. Um... Carter. Howard Carter. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Congratulations, sir. Thank you indeed. Please, I'll give you some time later. Okay. 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 Man, I've seen him before. Do I know him? Jonas Sebastian, the great collector. Collector? Mm -hmm. What's he doing here? Observing, Lord Carnarvon. Merely observing. Come on, my dear. and slaves 3,000 years ago. things. Wonderful. You have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks as if we've discovered, for all practical purposes, an unplundered royal tomb. In other words, it's unique. All the other tombs of the pharaohs have been broken into and robbed at some point in their history. But not this one. The tomb of Tutankhamun. Inside is another sealed doorway. But we will not proceed until we record every item. Gata, Andy! Gata! is perhaps a little eccentric, but he has, over the years, proved himself to be a truly fine archaeologist. 
Motivated by greed, Mr. Nahas? <laughs> if that were his motive, my minister would never have approved his excavation. I do not understand you. You wish a man success who cares nothing for the lives and safety of the Egyptian workers. I hear one of them was killed only the other day. An accident. I have a full report. No, I am satisfied that Mr. Carter's work is being conducted quite properly. If he misbehaved in some way, his concession could be transferred to another. Someone more interested in the welfare of your people. I cannot discuss such a possibility. No, of course not. My, 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 the rules of government service. I imagine, Mr. Nahas, the financial incentive for such loyalty is, alas, pathetically small. I shall be staying for a few days, observing Mr. Carter and his work. I do hope, dear friend, we have another opportunity to meet. after it had been sealed up. Now, Mr. Carter and his associates are cataloging every item found in the tomb. Now, when this is completed, they will then break through that sealed door into the chamber, where we have every reason to believe that the remains of King Tutankhamen still lies. May I have your attention, please? Lord Kynorven. Madam. The entire world is forever indebted to your lordship for your selfless dedication to the course of knowledge. How you ever managed to find this tomb amazes us all. Thank you, madam, but it is entirely Mr. Carter who is responsible for this. Ah, Mr. Cartman, your assistant, yeah. The ladies of our society have made me promise to ask you something very important. Is this place really cursed? Depends on which curse you mean. We suffer from all kinds. Oh. Oh. That's the way out. That woman was the guest of the Egyptian government, and you were unforgivably rude to her. That woman took her parasol and pounded it like a gavel on a 3,000-year-old work the of art. Egyptians want to encourage visitors, and we desperately need their help. All these tours and the rest of the rigmarole they put us through is just something we have to tolerate. I shield you from the press. Heaven knows. You shield me, yes. You keep me right out of sight. Ask anyone who discovered King Tut's tomb. What's the answer? Whose name do they hear about, read about, talk about? Lord Carnarvon, you don't even need it. You don't even... Sorry, must be very tired. All that will change, Carter. I'll see that you get your full share of the credit from now on. There is no need, sir. I have more than enough men to guard the tomb. I've ordered a steel gate from Cairo. Till it arrives, I'm sleeping in the tomb with a loaded pistol under my pillow. Perhaps you'd better spread the word. Inside, sir? You are sleeping inside the tomb? You're not another believer in spooks, are you, Lieutenant? The only thing to fear in there is bad air or suffocation. In case of which... Air goes bad, can early jeeps. You see? Well protected. Nothing can happen to us. You? are sleeping at the house in your own bed. No, Carter Effendi. Yes, Carter Effendi. That's final. Who are you? My name is Hassan. Sir? I wish to be your new number one. Really? You surprise me. I didn't expect a volunteer after the way Dowd died. I'm no believer in ancient curses. Have you worked on a dig before? With Professor Macro in the Western Desert. I have his letter to Fendi. You come well recommended. And I wish to work for you, Mr. Carter. All right.
See you in the morning, Hassan. Effendi. Good night, sir. Good night, Lieutenant. Bait. How did you get in here? Walked in. Can I stay now, Fendi? Yes. He was impressed. Of course he was. I start tomorrow. Hassan, how long have you and I been associated? Seventeen glorious years, Excellency. Here's to your next seventeen glorious years. I thought I heard you shouting. What you heard was the earthquake. Earthquake, Mr. Carter? Yes. A few seconds ago. Out. No, Carter, I want Lieutenant. to stay with you! No, Carter, I want to stay with you!
Howard. Good evening. Hello. You're all right. All right. We had a terrible story about an earthquake. Oh, just a tremor. Oh, I was so worried. If anything should happen to you. You were really worried. Howard, you're very special. <laughs> I was madly in love with you when I was 12. Well, I hope you recovered. Oh, you're such a dry old stick when you want to be. Oh, I'll try to be more entertaining. Let me show you the golden statuette of the king we discovered this morning. That would be lovely. Thank you. But he's a wonderful man. That's a good reason for admiring him, but not uh... for loving him. The man lives for his work, and his work alone is dedicated to that. Well, he may possess a woman if he feels in the mood, but no woman will ever possess him. I don't agree. Can you imagine spending the rest of your young life out here in the desert watching him sift sand and make up archaeological lists? Hmm? Oh, Papa. Evelyn, I think it would be better if you were to leave. Leave? Leave Luxor. You were here for the opening of the tomb. There's nothing much going to go on here for the next few weeks. You don't like the climate anyway. You said so yourself. You shan't change my mind. But you'll go. If you wish. I do. Very well, Father. What will you do? Oh, I shall stay here, if for nothing else, to keep those damn reporters away from Carter. Carter. Always Carter. Never Howard. That's how I always think of him. He's a remarkable fellow, I agree with you. But you'll be glad to get home, won't you? If you say so. Good afternoon. Evelyn? I have to catch a train, I'm afraid I haven't much time. A train? To Alexandria. Being sent home. Packed off like a schoolgirl. Things here have scarcely begun. Exactly. That's what my father's afraid of. Oh, Howard. I'm so unhappy. Why? Because... Uh, I'm sorry. Please forget this. It should never have happened. How could he? Morris here. Scarcely recognized you without your scribbling pad. Oh, I'm off duty. May I join you? Please yourself. Well, I hope his lordship has given you all the information you need on his discovery. You are very bitter. Yeah, you're very cool. I hear Lady Evelyn has left Luxor. Yes. His lordship sent her back. She was becoming too friendly with the chief hired digger. All your fault. Just a bad case of hero worship. She'll get over it. And you? I do as I'm told. By his lordship. None of these people give a fig for what we're doing anyway. Do you? Maybe I should tell them what we've been doing. Maybe I should tell them. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll tell them. Tell you all. Police! 
justice. I and, and a few other people who care about the truth and greatness of Egypt's past dynasties have spent our precious lives slaving day after day in the heat of the sun, shifting hundreds and hundreds of tons of sand carefully so as not to disturb a single relic. <laughs> what is it, really? Huh? Huh? What is it? <laughs> Just a lump of clay. And what would happen? What would be lost if I dropped it, eh? What? Nothing of value, really. Must go on. You idiots! It was only a fake you think I'd smash a real artifact. I only did it to shock you! When I think of those great treasures at the mercy of a drunkard who makes such an exhibition of himself in public... Reprehensible as his conduct undoubtedly was, Excellency. There's really no reason for the Department of Antiquities to take any action. A great pity. Lord Carnarvon is much too powerful. I'm sure it will take a much worse incident for his group to become persona non grata. By then, there. Uh, Carelessness and greed will have caused irreparable harm. Well, the man I sent to observe the dig gives me the most favorable reports of Carter's examination methods. Who's to say the reason for such reports? I will ignore that suggestion, Mr. Sebastian. Bribery is quite unthinkable in this context. I think you mistake my meaning, Ahmed Nahas. In my experience, corruption only leads to further corruption. I was speaking of gratitude. I have never been described as ungrateful. Keep me informed of Carter's behavior, if you wish. Let me know of any deviations. Egypt has far too much to lose to be caught off guard. Indeed it has. Over there. You still haven't convinced me, Carter. This is undoubtedly the most expensive way of transporting the artifacts. So I still don't believe it's necessary. It's the only way to get them to Cairo safely. All the treasures found in this valley were conveyed by portal railway to the Nile and then by steamer without any ill effects whatsoever. No other treasures have attracted so much attention. You'd be asking for trouble to transport them any other way. The machine, it comes down! I have to trust my judgment. In the light of your recent behavior, Carter? No wonder. Flimsy looking thing. Perfectly safe, Lord Carnarvon. You sure she can bear the load? Up to half a ton. Does the Egyptian government know all about this? They approved. We'll start shipping the contents of the antechamber as soon as they send us down an official to accompany it to Cairo. Well, you think of everything, don't you? I'm doing my job. It's what you pay me for. Hassan, look to the pilot. Help him make the plane secure. Effendi, the machine is dead. Fishbay, come on. Come on, Fishbay. Take weeks to create all this. Well, considering how long they've been in existence, that's the wink of an eye. The least we can do is take proper care. Give Jackson a hand, will you? Do you think King Tutankhamun would approve? Miss Morrissey, I'm surprised you're still here. So is my editor. I'm sorry. It's a slow business. And not exactly hot news, either. Well, why not talk to his lordship? He's usually good for a principal quote. I did. 
He told me Mr. Merton of the Times now has exclusive rights. So you're left with me. Depending on whether you throw me out, too. Stay if you like. Thank you. Well, I see you cleaned up a bit. Did you ever figure out why it was such a mess in here? The tomb must have been broken into shortly after it was sealed. Ah, oh, but they left most of the valuable objects buried. Well, perhaps they were only after easily portable things. Jewelry, jars of precious oils. Could, could they have been caught in the act? Perhaps, or... Or been frightened away. <laughs> of course. The curse. Already, Howard? Coming. Shrine. This must be the burial chamber. Is the mummy inside? Maybe a problem. You can try. Have you ever had the feeling that everything in your life was predestined, as if some hand were pushing ever so gently from behind? Is that why I met you, Carter? Or why I took up with archaeology? To stand here today in the tomb of King Tutankhamen. I feel his presence. He's here, just as surely as you or I. Well, don't miss this, Harry. Death comes on swift wings to those who disturb the pharaohs, too. Forget about that ridiculous curse. Priests certainly earned their funeral fees. To open it, we'll have to dismantle the shrine. Here. Hmm? Your cheek. I got a postcard from the other day from Rhodes. Why don't you telegraph her to come here? I don't need her fussing over me as well. Perhaps we should wait at least until it stops bleeding. I nicked myself shaving as well. Well, do come back upstairs. Stop tacking over me. The Earl of Carnarvon and Lady Evelyn Herbert.
could he be dying? I saw him just two days ago. He seemed all right to me. And there's some kind of insect bite on his left cheek. It appears to have become infected. Insect bite? Excuse me. I wish I'd been told sooner. He wouldn't let me send for you. He thought you wouldn't come. How could he? All this, all your work had become his life. And now... You'd better come in now. At the very moment Lord Carnarvon gasped his hallucinated way into death, all of Cairo's lights went out, six separate power plants, as if to herald further disasters yet to come. In England, on the very same night, his dog, Janus, collapsed and died. He was warned. He chose to ignore that warning. Do you really believe that a curse made over 3,000 years ago could kill a man today? My dear, I don't believe. I know. There are some things one knows in the very depths of one's being. What about the others? Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter? He, too is doomed. I've told the men. We'll close down the dig, at least for a time. No, Howard. You must carry on. He would have wanted that. Are you serious? I think I knew him well enough to be sure of that. I wish I'd known him better. Difficult under the circumstances. And you? What will you do? I'll take his body back to Highclere. And then? Will you return to Egypt? I'm not sure. One thing at least, the funds for the dig will go on. I give you my word on that. Thank you. But you haven't answered my question. Will you be coming back? I don't think so. One time, I thought all sorts of things would be possible. But you live only for the past out here. I see no future for us. Left very slow. Left. Left. Careful. 
It's magnificent. Pity he didn't live to see it. Yes, well, I've heard of men dying in strange ways, but an insect bite. According to the doctor, became inflamed and fever set in. Still, it makes you wonder. Lord Carnarvon's death was an untimely tragedy. Nothing more. God, it's stuffy in here. Fish bait. I told you, this door must always be left open. One corpse is all I intend to take out of this tomb. Sorry, Effendi. It won't happen again. find like it. That's why I feel incredibly, what's the word? Not lucky. Chosen to be here and to have had a part in it all. I know. I feel it too. Not chosen, but lucky to have met you. Don't be silly. Nothing special about me. I think there is. I think under that prickly surface, you are very warm-hearted and tender. And... Thank you. 
I've got a lot of new stuff to show you. Come on. Careful. Damn. What? The other key, it's up at the house. It's not locked. That is foul. Oh, my God. Well, what happened? He must have suffocated. Guarding that tomb because that's what I always do. Of all the reasons for a child to die, emulating me. Now stop it. Blame the guard, the dig, the curse, but don't blame yourself. Sorry to disturb you, sir, at home, but it's Hassan. He has the men loading crates onto the aeroplane. What? He says he's following your orders, but... I what? gave no such order. What the hell does he think he's doing? We'll find out. I had your message. I've ordered a temporary closure of the tomb. I understand that the aeroplane is about to leave. But the official clearances haven't been arranged. Of course not. That aircraft is not going to go anywhere near Cairo. Hassan is using it to transport artifacts of enormous value out of the country. Stealing? And Carter's behind it all. Hassan is his man. Of course, Mr. Carter will deny all knowledge, but... There must be some other explanation. I'll come with you to the airstrip. Mm.
extraordinary. Carter must be out of his mind. He is clearly not a man to be entrusted with valuable relics. I will telephone my minister for instructions. Come on. Well, there's nothing we can do. No one could have survived that. We better get back to the tomb to see what's missing. Isn't that Sebastian? With Nahas. But they know something we don't. Any idea which objects you're missing? They were all from the outer chamber. Valuable, God knows. But there's more important stuff that hasn't been crated yet. If Hassan had waited a while, he could have taken things worth a great deal more. He must have known that. Mark certainly did. Maybe money wasn't the object. Maybe he wanted you held responsible and, and removed from the dig by the government. How could that help him? Well, not him. Sebastian. Suppose Sebastian was behind it all. Now, now, go back a little. That relic that was stolen in London, the Davis Papyrus, what exactly did it contain? It was an inventory of some kind. Are the items in the tomb? Could be. Then I'll make some more suppositions. Davis, not Davy. Davis Papyrus. Now, that is what Lord Carnarvon was trying to say when he died. What if Sebastian obtained that papyrus and deciphered it and learned there was something special in that tomb worth far more than anything you found? Well, we've uncovered everything, except the coffins themselves. Well? We'll soon find out. Before Sebastian and Nahas stop us. I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. I have just had strict orders from Mr. Nahas himself. No one is to enter the tomb. Oh, well, that can't mean us, surely. What about the others? No, they are getting ready to leave, sir. The orders were very clear. No one. There's been a theft. We have to check what's missing. I understand, sir, but orders... We'll lock the gate behind us. No one will follow. I don't know, sir. Come on, do you think we're tomb robbers? No, certainly not, madame. Well, then. Very well. Only five minutes, huh? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Happy now? It's locked. Thank you, Excellency. No, I'll draw up the necessary paperwork. Mm. Thank you. Goodbye. He has agreed. All further work on the tomb is to stop until the matter of the aircraft has been explained. Good. May I suggest we inform Mr. Carter? Sebastian's after must be inside, but it can't just be the mummy itself. The lid's been sealed tight. We'll destroy it if we force it open. We'll destroy nothing. We'll drill in pegs at the side to take the weight and use the pulleys to lift it off. What about Sebastian? Jackson, cut a hole in the door just large enough to allow us to breathe, and then shut it and lock it. I'll keep a lookout. You mark it. And we'll drill. Quick as we can. We haven't much time. Solid gold. Much heavier than I thought. It'll weigh a ton.
Mr. Carter is inside. He must be evicted at once. Someone's coming. Who is it? Sebastian and Naha. Damn. Mr. Carter! Mr. Carter, bring the key up here at once. Ignore them. I have an order from my minister to stop all your work. Get the door closed. Break the lock. If I may make a suggestion, the light inside is powered by a generator. The generator is out there. Is he? Heave! And again. Heave! Better go back. Try again. Together. Heave! Oh my God, the lights, what's happening? Someone's cut the generator. Sarah, take these, light a lamp. Once more, together. Heave! Relax. Now, one more go. Heave! It's coming. Oh. Uh, Collins! Oh, you hurt. Nearly free. Watch out behind you, Mason. Do you need help, Mason? Seal's breaking. Heave! Again. There. Slowly up. something as exquisite as this and then to have buried it as an eternal gift and the rest of the world had hardly set aside its clubs and flint axes the sun god of richest gold so this is what you learned from that papyrus that there was a death mask it is more beautiful than anyone could have dreamed Jonas Sebastian could never possess the mask of Tutankhamun. By exposing it to the world, Howard Carter ensured that no one person would ever own this fabulous golden treasure. Under the mask, the mummy of the boy king was intact, and when it was unwrapped, a small spot was found on the left cheek, a wound that could have resulted from an insect bite exactly like the one on Lord Carnarvon. Had Tutankhamun died in the same way? Was the curse just a legend? 
or a reality, fact or fantasy. We all know the contents of the tomb proved to be the most valuable treasure in history, but what became of the people who attended its discovery? Lieutenant Mahaba was killed by a rockfall. Around his neck was found a small medallion from the tomb. Ahmed Nachas became director of antiquities at the Saqqara Museum, but collapsed and died suddenly while cleaning a statue taken from the burial chamber. Princess Velma failed to predict the Great Depression and died in poverty. No member of the Carnarvon family ever returned to Egypt. Lady Almina married again and moved to France, trying to forget High Clear and its unhappy memories. Lady Evelyn fell in love again, married, and lived a long, contented life. The murderously acquisitive Jonas Sebastian was driven mad by the urge to possess what he could never possess, the mask of Tutankhamun, but lived on for years in comfort and security. Sarah Morrissey enjoyed her moment in the sun with Howard Carter, then stepped away and devoted the rest of her life to the pursuit of headline stories. But wherever she traveled throughout the entire world, she never found another story like the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb. And what about Howard Carter? He too is doomed. Doomed? Howard Carter, the man who did not believe in curses, was to spend the rest of his life in the Valley of the Kings, alone and obsessed with his own incredible discovery. His was a living curse, perhaps the deadliest kind. In that sense, as the princess predicted, he was indeed doomed.